Three Beards Media Podcast may contain mature themes. And if you're not down with that, we got three words for you. Like the podcast. Nailed it. Welcome back to another edition of the Ball Don't Lie podcast. We are in season four, episode five. I'm Ted Hawley, and I'm joined here, as always, by my co-host, Justin Smool. Uh, Smooley, what's up, buddy? Nothing, man. How are you? Good, buddy. Just another ho-hum three and two week for us in the Circa. Kicking it along. along. Yeah, we'll take that. Seattle came through for us on Monday night. Put us at 13 and seven on the season, sitting at 65%. It's a good start for sure. Uh, yeah. like, like, as I like to say, we got a, a website weekend, three W's. Those are always good. You don't go backwards. Yep. Yep. Uh, I want to thank Jordan Walker again for joining us last week. We had a lot of good feedback with him on the episode. It's always good to catch up with him. Uh, wasn't so good for his Packers on that or his Luke Musgrave bet as he went down in the first <laughs> quarter, I think with injury and that didn't hit, but, yeah. um, it was, uh, we, we enjoyed having him on and we kind of got to chop it up with them in a group chat as the weekend went on. So uh, thanks again to him. And we'll kind of just recap last week here real quick with him too. Uh, Jordan went three and two in his uh, NCAA picks. Uh, I took one of his over-unders. I hammered hard with his Duke Notre Dame one that whiffed and I ignored his Ole Miss LSU one. And that hit by a lot. That's so <laughs> right there on it. Um, he went two and four in his uh, NFL plays. Um, again, I went two and three in NCAA and my, my average went up with that. That's how bad I've been in the NCAA this year so far. So, which means I'm probably due to smack on one of these times puts me at six, 12 and one in the year in, in the NCAA. That's really bad. But again, let me go up from there. Um, another three and two week for me in the NFL, put me at 12 and nine. So, uh, good, good shape there. Uh, you had your first kind of rough weekend in the, in the NCAA last weekend, yep. uh, two and five there and still, Above 500 in the season, though, at 14 and 13 on your NCAA plays. Uh, another three and two week for you in, in uh, NFL, putting you at 13, 10 and one. So sitting pretty there. And again, we went three and two in our circa plays there. Um, again, we always, we always post those on Twitter. Early can have those. Uh, listen for the podcast for us on why we're playing them. But um, yeah, yeah we, we played um, last week, we played the Rams in a pick em, which was that was the right side of that the whole game. It got a little scary there. It did get it, it goes oh, no, no, overtime. I mean, the whole game 23 to zero start. We had to, we had to wait till overtime to get that win. That was, oh, uh, yeah, that one was man, bad. I, yeah, I had bad feeling there after that second missed field goal. I thought, oh no, we're we're up against it, dude. Richardson's a fun guy to watch. I'm telling you, it's, it, it's to be. I mean, if you have him in fantasy leagues, and I do it a lot too, he's always just coming a must play. Um, for yeah. how, what, what he can do on that in his sport, he's gonna make mistakes. He's a rookie, but yeah, I mean, look, it's just. Wow, while we're talking about that real quick, we can talk about the rookies before we close up. Actually, let's let's do this first. We'll close out on that too. We had the Chargers plus or sorry, minus five and a half. That was a win. Felt good about that. And then got close too. We, yeah. we had to sweat that out. Seahawks in a pick 'em. There was no sweat there. That was an absolute beatdown. The Giants mm-hmm. are horrible. Um, yep. and then the Steelers and Patriots both got their butts kicked. Um, we were definitely on the wrong side of both of those. We had two big whiffs, but three and two, we'll take it. 13 and seven. Yep. Um but uh, we'll probably save some of that uh, uh, rookie quarterback talk and get to the NFL. But there's uh, one guy that looks very good, one guy that looks pretty good, and one guy that went number one overall that – I don't know, buddy. Horrible. Yeah. But yep. uh, as we like to call it, our NCAA plays are the appetizers to the weekend. We're big NFL guys, but uh, 
you got to you got to keep busy until Sunday comes for the big plays. Yeah. Uh, you were on Iowa State last weekend. Yeah. Uh, and that was an interesting yeah. game. So as an Iowa State fan, and you know you too know, look, there there was a time where we were playing. I mean, that's a, it, it's a better football team than us by far. Obviously, the, the spread said so. It was twenty. Sure, sure. A couple of plays back and forth. The only thing I will say at this point is from where we looked, especially offensively, just weeks ago, playing Iowa and following up after that too, not being able to run the ball at all. Um, I mean, when can we had like sixty-two yards rushing total in the season going into this game, yeah. and like and we in uh, some of busted a big one to get us above that just on that alone there was things to build off off and look we're young and we're not a very good football team that's just what it is we're just not but right. as a super young team even they got beat by 30 i actually left going away there you know taking the gambling out of it the gambling side away from it you know to get in that part of it i was like you know what I, i'm i'm not pissed i guess no. yeah no i would agree um i mean if you told me it's kind of the hindsight thing but if you like told me you know said Iowa State's going to get in the 20s here I would I I'd, I'd say they're going to cover sure you know sure. when you're getting 20 and you score in the 20s I mean let's face it right their defense just had a I I didn't really like what I saw from the like like Gabriel had a lot of times all day back there and he's just chucking them and I and I you you can't let that caliber of player sit in there and do well, that. sure and, and he's an above average with mobility, he's, you know, yes. he's, he's a dual threat ish, but I mean, it kind of proved right there with our inability to get home. If we're going to be playing some super athletic dual threat quarterbacks, we might be in trouble. I mean, yeah, I think that yeah. kind of gave some, a blueprint of what to do on us there, but look, I, Rocco's being fine. I, I'm still on the train though, too, of look, Cole is, I still think Cole is going to be our guy. He is, but Rocco's really good too. He is a division one starting quarterback. So we're they're in a weird spot where you got two freshmen right now on that. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out the rest of the year with you know a team that's probably not going bowling. It's probably not going to happen. So when that becomes completely evident, you know, gotta, you're win gotta, gotta win this week. Gotta pull the upset if you have a chance for a bowl game. Sure, but it, it'll be interesting to see what Campbell does, you know, with three, four weeks to go in the season with two freshmen there with, with this new world we live in with this transfer portal. Yeah. Which quarterback do you want to lose? Right. Because that's a decision you're going to have to make because they're both – there's no way both quarterbacks are both on the roster next year, right? No. I mean, well, you're right. I mean – And maybe it goes to the spring, maybe. But yeah, I just think not. that his decision that he yeah. makes, if we're not going bowling, that's clear cut and it's done, will say a lot about maybe who we see taking the first snap next year. Well, yeah. I mean, you don't bring – I mean, JJ's the highest what quarterback recruit ever. I mean, so – I mean, if he knows going in after this season that he's not going to be the guy, I mean, you would sure. think he's he's leaving. I mean, that. Well, that's and if only... you're if you're if you're the team just east of here, yeah. don't you go? Well, I mean, no. not that you're going to go there, but no. it, yeah. you should be. Oh yeah, they should. But I mean, JJ, I I I'll, I'll get the little that I do know or anything about him, like you. You gotta be you're you gotta be somewhat smart. Like you don't go there. <laughs> I still think JJ is gonna be the guy. And, and it sounds like I'm a Rocco hater, and I'm really not. I'm really no. not at all. He's done some good things. I just think yeah. there's so much upside and how big of a recruit he was to get that. Yeah. You gotta find it out. And unfortunately, in this new system we have, you can't really wait too long. You're gonna lose him because there will be teams stacked up. Honestly, for both of these guys, which is a which yeah. is a benefit to both players that they don't have to. Yeah duke this out each other for three years to find out one yeah. of them's gonna leave so yep I, nope i agree yeah you want to talk about the iowa side unfortunately for what sure happened let's get state. into that a little bit go ahead yeah um you know i well i had michigan state last week easy actually i kind of had to sweat it but it was an easy cover actually they were the right side the whole way to be honest they were. Um, there was it, it's just your typical I mean, I, I won't beat a dead horse here, but I mean, yes, you will. Yes, yeah. you will. <laughs> <laughs> but they're bad. You know, it's, it's unfortunate what's going on um, with them, you know, wasting def They just have to rely on special teams and defense every single week, you know, and um, they, they've become, if you listen to stuff outside of our local media, I mean, they're, they're just a laughing stock um, in terms of like yardage and offensive numbers. Right. I mean, they're damn near last in the NCAA again. I mean, it's 
it's rinse and repeat. You know, it doesn't matter who they bring in for the OC or anybody else. It's as long as the head puppet master is in charge, nothing's changing, you know, and, and he's going to, I've said this and I look, he's going to leave this program in shambles, man. When, when these divisions go away and you have to actually go out and get better recruits because you're not just playing the West all the time, you're, you're going to struggle. Well, and it'll be interesting to see what he does. It's, it's funny you bring that up because I just had a conversation with my cousin the other day about this. And, you know, for all that Hayden Fry is worshipped for and what he did for that program, he left that program in a very bad Ooh. spot when he was done. Correct. So, you know, so that's why it's always interesting for me with the Hawkeye fans with basketball and football. You know, Tom Tom Davis left a Sweet 16 team and he had not been back since. And Hayden yep. Fry left a disaster. Correct. That, those, those are facts. I mean, yep. you can't dispute. Either of nope. those. Nope. Oh, nope. I mean, look, McNamara's done. That was a big ticket item. Not that it was going to matter anyway. So, no, it, again, that's bad, well, though. Well, it, yeah, that sucks. I feel bad. Yeah, you don't want to see a kid go down. He's been struggling with that, too. So, hopefully, he can come back and be all right. Right. But, all right, I, I got five plays this week. Let's just jump well, back into it here. Yeah, you I got, got it. five plays. Again, right. it's, it's time for me to get lucky on some of this stuff, too. I'm not a NCAA mastermind <laughs> at all. So, if you've been fading me this year on that, you're up a lot of money. Good for you. <laughs> but, uh, I'll uh, I'll kick it off for us. Okay. Uh, look, Texas opened the week at six and a half point favorites, and I liked it there in the Red River shootout. Yeah, uh, they're down to five. So, I look OU beat up on Iowa State again. We're not a good football team. I think Texas is a better team here. This won't be an overlooked game. I think they'll be up for it. I think this is a I think this is a layup. Yeah. All right. I mean, I I can get behind it. My own. I don't have it. Uh, but the only way I would look would be Texas. I just, I just think this team is, I think they're really good. I just think they're really good. I mean, again, in our group chat with Jordan Walker, he goes, guys, is Texas the best team in the nation? And I wanted to be, you know, a dick about it back. And I couldn't, I'm like, they might be. Yeah. The, the SEC is down for the SEC this year, even Georgia. So they, they really might be. We'll find out in this game. We'll tell a lot. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go against one of my other favorite coaches. I'm gonna take Texas A&M against uh, Nick Saban. Um, Bama's down point blank. Uh, A&M's plus one and a half here. So I, I, I just think that Alabama, you know, overrated. They I, they're getting a little bit of credit here because of the back to back wins over Ole Miss and Mississippi State. I think people are like, oh, they're just finding their stride now. I don't know, man. I, I think this is the one Jimbo has this circled, and um, A&M's a good team. They're sneaky this year. Um, at home, that in that that field, that environment, that fifth man, it's. I think uh, I think Alabama's up against. I think A&M wins this one outright. Bama made my card. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so I got Bama just before we got on. It's at one actually. Do you still oh, like one. that? Okay, all right. Do you still like it? I mean, you're, yeah, you're taking no, the one, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah. So yeah, but the three sites I checked it on, it got down to one because I think it was at two. I think it opened at two, right? Or two and a half. Bama, it's down. Yeah. Basically, I mean, I, don't be shocked to see that a pick them. So if you are on the on the A and M side here, I would get it at plus points while you can. That's if the fun. line's moving this much for the week, don't be shocked sure. to see it get there. So, um, I mean, yeah. So basically, you think Bama's? You think A and M's winning this football game? Is what you're saying? Yeah. Right. Right. Well, I, I just think this is a – and look, if you're right on this, boy, it's, it's to a point with Saban to where there's going to be questions because, you know, you haven't been the kingpin anymore. Georgia's still doing what they're doing. So if you're not even talking about Bama with Georgia anymore, you're starting to talk about these other schools that are that have been lesser forever. It's just a situation that Saban hasn't been in in his tenure at Alabama at all. No, right. Yeah, I mean, this is it, – it's just going to be hilarious to hear the fan If they do lose the fans down there, like – They'll forget about all the national titles. They'll forget about it. They everything. will, buddy. It's just <laughs> it's crazy. They live yeah. in such an echo chamber in SEC country that it is year yeah. to year and it's nuts. Yeah, it you is. know, it's not it's not even like Bill in the NFL. You don't get history on your side forever with that because it's so hard to win Super Bowls. It's right. now, now, now. Correct. So, yep. It's, it'll be it'll Coach be got fired what two years after a title. So did uh the Auburn did Chiswick, the old guy too. I mean, they don't care. I mean, yeah. Saban is a little different, he's not getting yeah. fired, right? But for the first time in his tenure, they're going to start asking if he's washed. Right. Oh, for sure. Yep. Hundred percent. All right. Well, um, we disagree there. Okay. Um, I'm going to go Central Florida plus one and a half at Kansas. Um, 
I was fortunate last week with Baylor making a gross, gross comeback. <laughs> you were on the wrong side of that. And, they, and then they won outright. And they won outright against Central Florida. 29, I think it was a 29 0 finish, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so here's the, I, I just think Central Florida's come out with, they got a, their heads on fire here. You have to uh, be. Yeah. You know, they, this is a great bounce back spot. Kansas, I'm not sure what we know with them yet. I mean, Dan is a good quarterback, but I do like Central Florida's offense. I think there's some firepower there. I think they'll be able to move the ball. I also think they, the line they still coach, scored what 35 last week. I think. Yeah, 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 they yeah they scored in the 30s. So um, I think the line's kind of indicating that they actually think Central Florida's the better team by only making Kansas a short favorite. So I'm going to take him in a bounce back spot here. I can get behind that. I'll cheer for you there. Okay. Um, I got Virginia Tech. Oh gosh, it's just missed for me. Plus 24 mm-hmm. at Florida State. Look, I like Florida State. We've talked about this here too. I yeah. like that. This is just, I think this is too many points. I just really do. I get it. Florida State's at home, but man, I, I saw this. Like if you, I said, yeah, two touchdowns. I think this is eight to 10 points inflated here. It's just too many points for me to get behind. I think yeah. Virginia Tech will play hard. So I'm taking, I'm taking the Hokies for that reason. Okay. Yeah, this one just missed for me. Um, I'm going to take Arkansas plus 12. Uh, against Ole Miss, um, I just think it, it, it. This is a spot play. I just think Ole Miss is off Bama and LSU back to back games. Got one of them. Yeah, got one of them. This feels like just a letdown spot. Um, point blank. I mean, Arkansas just took LSU to the wire two weeks ago. Probably should have won the game outright. Sure. Um, and you're well, not even saying that Arkansas is going to win the game. No, just- but you're going to give me twelve. What I feel in a letdown spot after. I mean, everyone gets up to play Alabama and LSU in conference. There's no debate about that. So I just think this could be one that they might come out a little sleepwalking in. Ole Miss doesn't exactly have the best defense by any means. Sure. No, so. no, they don't. They're going to have up points. It's just yeah. that lane train's got to keep the ball moving on that side or they're going to lose games. So I agree. Right. Okay. okay. I got uh, – look, I'm going back. This is kind of a weird spot. I didn't want to take it. But, boy, I just think Baylor came out flat. I think that game was more indicative at the end of it how it should have been. I don't think Tech's very good. I just okay. don't think Tech's very good. And Baylor getting points. I know they're on the road, but I'm getting plus one and a half. I'm going to take Baylor. I think they're going to win this game. I really do. I I, I love their coach. Okay. He just seems to write the ship and keep their heads right on stuff. They're never out of the type of deal. And I just I just feel in this look. I'm nervous about this play. I'm not going to lie. My, my last two plays, I'm nervous about. But I'm going to take Baylor getting points at Tech. Okay. Yep, I can get behind that. Let's see. I got a couple more. Um. This is a classic one for me, this spot here. So I'm going to take Wyoming plus six at home against Fresno State. Fresno State's in the rankings, and whenever I see these non-Power 5 schools get ranked for the first time and then they go on the road, I just go right against them. I took the cheese with Tulane last week, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, I Just tough spot. Wyoming's no – I mean, the, this can be tough competition. They're not a rollover here. Sure. Um, so – I don't know. Fresno's riding hot. They're probably feeling a little fat and happy. Um, I had a, it's it's a goofy angle, but this is one I look for. It's the same feeling in college basketball too. Whenever you see like one of these goofy schools make a run and get ranked, fade them right away. All right, go Cowboys. <laughs> yeah, go Cowboys. All right, keep going. I just got one play left. Okay, um, Arizona plus twenty two against uh, USC. Um, another one. It's just a spot play here, but. USC this just there. missed for me because of that and the points. There's so many points in this. Yeah. I mean, Arizona's fine. They're, this team's kind of under the radar. USC's oh. defense is trash. Exactly. So that's one That's one of the main reasons. USC's defense trash. A, the motivation for USC here has to be low. They're off the Colorado win, which everyone's up to play Dion. We've already had talked about that before. Well, USC has Notre Dame on deck next week. I'm checking the overrunner in this game right now. i got to see what these points are. Um, yeah, let me see too. But anyway, I think the looks, oh my gosh, 72. I would take the, uh, that's a lot, but <laughs> 72. I'm going to bet the over on that. It's not going to make my car, but I'm going to bet the over on that. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's crazy. That's wow. 72. I, 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 I mean, I don't even know what to expect with that. I think USC is going to score 50, but I think, I think Arizona will score 35. Okay. Yeah. I ho- and I hope that's the final. There, you're perfect. You're perfect. <laughs> right, right. So yeah, I'm just taking a plus. I'm taking a plus twenty two here. This it just feels like a lot in a in a in a bad spot for USC. Sure. 
And look, hey, sorry, my last play, I'm going to run it back on playing against Georgia again, too. And this is why I'm, why I'm nervous is this might be a get right after they got scared last week. Georgia did. Yeah, you, you were right on that one. But I was against Kentucky last week, too. I think Kentucky just better than I thought they were. Okay. I got, I got Auburn home last week, and they gave Georgia a real scare. I mean, it's, it's, it's the exact same line as last week. I took Auburn plus 14 and a half last week against Georgia. Uh, they were at home, though. This is Kentucky at Georgia. So I'm very nervous about this. This is my least confident play um, that's making my card. But, man, I just think Stoops is going to keep them competitive in this. And I'm not sure Georgia's quite as good as they've been. I just don't know if they're the team that can be coming out riding these plus two touchdown lines every week. We're going to find out. Now, if they get them, they come out and they smack them around. We'll see. But Kentucky's Kentucky's a lot better than I thought they were. And that's my reason um, for playing. Getting, I mean, it's 14 in the hook here. I'm going to yeah. take Kentucky. Okay. Yeah, I don't mind this, actually. Uh, I, You know what? I just thought of this as you're talking about the game. It's like, are we, are we at a point now where they're – I mean – Bama for sure doesn't pass the eye test. No, they and, don't. And Georgia doesn't either. They're winning the games, but it's not because they look like Georgia, like you alluded. And look, to. and this could be a situation with Georgia too, to where when you've won so much in a row, you're going for a three peat. You kind of just go, "We're good enough to show up and walk through it." Sure. And that's what makes me nervous is they might have gotten a wake up call. But look, if they come out and they have another drag it out deal with Kentucky here again, this might be the year you see the the title move outside the SEC. Or maybe no SEC team makes the Final Four. Oh, give me that, please. <laughs> but, you know, that, that, then it's going to be a Texas that does it. And they're going to come in. I'll have that argument too. Right. Like going in next year. That's funny. Um, I'm going to pick one more. Actually, I should have picked up the first one, but I, I'm taking Purdue plus two and a half against Iowa. <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> hey, I'm two and oh the last two weeks fading Iowa. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to keep fade. I, you know, it's, it's unfortunate circumstances, right? With um, McNamara, with, yeah. I mean, look, you're you're a Hawkeye fan and hater at this point, but yeah, no party ever wants to see that. You no, I don't. So it, it sucks for the kid, right? And sure, but, but I can tell you what I Hill. I don't know. May, maybe the playbook is a hair better with a week under his the belt. round mound a check down. I saw that as a potential yeah. nickname. That has to stick. That's, That's great. hilarious. That That's is great. Hilarious. But he. He does have a big arm. That's obvious, but I again though. So that doesn't translate to much to me. Like he can throw it eighty yards, but uh, what does that get this you? offense? Yeah, Purdue's had Iowa's number. You know, in the history of this game, you have to also just wonder where Iowa's heads are at. Right when you lose, like everyone was excited about Cade, right, and what that he was bringing to this team, even though he didn't live up or perform to what people sure. thought right it's just it's just takes a lot I mean, of uh, yeah like, i mean this is a card that played in the the college football playoffs i mean that you right did. That's yeah what it is. so i just wonder where the where the team's heads are at here um they did fight hard um last week to you know crawl out of that one but i i mean purdue is a little bit better than michigan state so michigan state michigan state was you know, hell, they didn't even have a coach. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, so. All right. I, I, I get it here. I'll be staying away from it, but sure. I get your reasoning why. Yep. Is that your last play? Yep, that's the last one, college. All right, we'll recap it here real quick. Uh, I got five plays and Small has six. For me, I have Texas minus five, Virginia Tech plus 24, Bama minus one, Baylor plus 1.5, Kentucky plus 14.5. Uh, for Smule, we got uh, Texas A&M plus one, UCF plus 1.5, Arkansas plus 12, Wyoming plus six, Arizona plus 22, and Purdue plus 2.5 for all dogs in the six plays. Surprise, surprise. That's a small special. <laughs> but uh, that'll wrap it up for our plays here in NCA. So before we get into our main course here, let's uh, go ahead and jump over and get a word from our sponsors at Revelton. At Revelton Distilling Company, everyone has become a part of the Revelton family. From the Taylors and their daughter who helped perfect their award-winning gins, to the team who installed Lucy, our 33-foot tall custom-made still, right down to the local farms that provide our coveted corn, and even the cows on those farms who consume our mash byproduct. Want to see the farm to flask come to life? Now you can tour Lucy and find out where we take Iowa's harvest and transform it into our finest spirits. Choose between a 45-minute tour or find out even more by scheduling a VIP behind-the-scenes tour to get the taste of the full Revelton experience. You can visit them at 1400 West Clay Street in Osceola, Iowa, or 
Find all of Revelton's award-winning spirits at any local grocery or spirits retailer. Company man here, so make sure you stop in all those places and get Revelton. Thanks to our sponsors there. Uh, and also thank you again. We're with Three Beards Media. Uh, thanks to all those guys Chris and them do. It's been a great marriage for us. This is our, our fifth episode in, and it's been uh, fantastic. I think we're both doing okay in the Three Beards fantasy football deal right now. My, my yeah. wife's also in it, and she's doing all right too. But yeah. um, again, we're back. NFL Week 5. Yeah. We're starting to learn some things about some teams. This is where you really kind of get into it. Some teams yep. on that make or break side, especially with them extending the, the trade deadline these next two weeks, three weeks especially. There's a lot at stake for a lot of teams with that at players with expiring contracts. Right. Um, again, we went three and two across the board last week, including Circa. Um, puts us at 13 and seven for the season. Great start to that contest. Fantastic start to the contest. I'm 12 and nine. You're 13, 10 and one. We're cooking. It's good. Let's jump into it. I got five plays, um, but I'll let you get us started. All right. Yeah. First play. I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take the Steelers plus four um, at home against the Ravens. It, it sounds like Pickett's good to go. And even if he's not, I mean, he said it yesterday. I, I don't even think there's much of a drop off between him and Trubisky, to be honest. I if feel there like is, it's, it's minuscule, but Trubisky yeah. does things he doesn't too. Correct. So. Yeah. So um, just over the history of this um, rivalry, I mean, this is the classic rah-rah Mike Tomlin spot. If there ever is one, this is it. Sure. You know, the home dog in a division game. I really don't need to say any more. I mean, after yeah, last that, that's how we got them home. I think was it week two or whatever it was. They're home dogs two times their own prime time. Like, well, they're not losing. Yeah, they beat the Browns twice in a row at home and as right. dogs not happen. No, exactly. Yeah, they already beat the Browns at home and that it was that Monday night game. They were plus two and a half. We had them, we took them. I mean, it was gross, but they got home. It's got the, home. Again, they, they look like the Hawkeyes and they play like the Hawkeyes. It's weird. Yeah. They're going to find yeah. ways to get that strip sack score, return a punt, do something weird. They just, that's how they play. And Tomlin's good at it. Yep. So I'm going to take, I did see actually a crazy stat here. I can't take credit for because I don't even know where they pulled this from. But when Mike Tomlin has lost by 20 or more points, the next game he is nine or 10 and no against the spread. Well, I mean, there's enough right there to get my juices flowing with you playing yeah. that now. Yeah, that's why that's a wild stat. That is a wild stat, actually. Yeah. Um look, I, I we started our podcast talking about these rookie quarterbacks, and everything I've said about them so far is gonna make it really weird when you hear my plays this week. <laughs> but uh I'm gonna start with look, I I've been big on the Falcons before the year started. I said there's gonna be lots of spot plays with them. It's gonna make sense in certain spots. They're not okay at quarterback yet. All the pieces are there besides that, though. I love Art Smith as a coach, and I think this is a spot play. The Texans have been playing really, really well. Jumped out the start. Stroud is everything you want and more. He looks like the real deal. That's all great. That roster is still not very good. Mm -mm. It's just not. And this is a spot where I think Atlanta can slow the ball down, pound it with all their backs. And it, it's just when are we going to see Heineke? That's that's the, the thing is because you know what you have in him. If this is probably a playoff football team, especially when they win this game, you got to think about. I mean, you give up on Ritter forever if you do that. I get it. you got to see what you have here. You're hoping because he has a potential because you know what you have in Heineke, but I, it just feels like it's going to be turned over to him before the year is over, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, it, yeah. I mean, right now Atlanta's kind of saying the right things. By the way, this is on my card with you. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Falcons as well. I do. Yep. Yeah. Right. My, minus one point five is spot play for me. It is. Yeah, it is. It's the same thing, right? I mean, let's face it. The Texans are trying to win three straight. When's the last time we said that? <laughs> I mean, if you'd have told me they didn't win three games this year, I said, yeah, it makes sense. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, and I'm not saying, but we both, I mean, we're both on the same train. Stroud is passing the eye test beyond belief right now. I mean, beyond belief. Him, he, he looks like a can't miss potential yes. franchise guy for the next decade plus. Yep. Richardson is intriguing as hell right now. And in Bryce Young, it looks like maybe that was a mistake with the guys on the board. And it, but it's not even just that with the, with the Panthers. They're on four right now. And you have this amazing quarterback class coming in. You could have maybe had the first pick, and it's going to go to the Bears. Right, yeah. The Bears have the first and second pick of the draft next year. Yeah, right, which is wild. Yeah, um, but, yeah, no, I, I'm with you here on the Falcons. Agree. Right. The, the only thing that really sucks about this is just Atlanta coming from off the London game. But here's the thing. I, I just think the Falcons are a team you're going to play at home. I think Ritter at home, 
the foul that defense is the defense for Atlanta is is underrated. Uh, I'm telling you right now that that team's winning nine, 10 games this year. So just, yeah. they're, they're going to get smacked around in like six or seven of their losses. It's going to happen, but they're yeah. going to win a bunch of games is how they're built. They're going to yeah. get like two touchdowns some weeks and be like, Oh, they're terrible. We're going to come back and win games next week. Just right. Do that. Yep. And that's how the NFL works. This is how the NFL works. So that'll definitely be a circuit play for us. Okay. Yep. Yep. We like, we both like Atlanta. All cool. Right. I'm um, going to go back to the well. Burrow's got to start playing better if he's not. So this is a deal this week. You're minus three at Arizona. The Cardinals come and cover this, win this football game. You shut Burrow down. So if he wants to play this year, he's got to come. I mean, he's not right. It's very obvious he is not right. You just lost yeah. T. Higgins. I get it, but the Cardinals play hard. But this is a spot where you got to come out and be. I mean, this is a team with Super Bowl aspirations. You got to come out. You should not be at what would this line have been preseason? 10, 12, 13? Yeah, you're, getting, you're getting a bunch of points on this from a month ago where it had been. They have to come out and smack him around. Otherwise, you're talking potential of shutting Burrow down at least for a while. Yeah, I mean, this is – I mean, I, I even if – gosh, even if they win the game, I still think their season's over, truthfully. I just – I think there's too much ground to make up for. I mean, they – I just don't see the Bengals that, that are capable of going to rattle off six or seven in a row. I, they just don't feel like that. I mean, so, they did it last year, but no, right now, nothing has been done to give you any indication it's that way. And that's what I'm no. saying. If, if it's going to happen, it has to be this week against Arizona. So if sure. it doesn't happen now, it's not going to happen. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I'm not, I won't be going against you here as well, just for that, right? It does feel like the ultimate buy low spot for sure. sure. Um, I tell you, what, I will give the Cardinals credit, man. This team plays hard. They play hard. They play hard every week. There's something to be said for that in the NFL when you're, when you're underdogs for sure. Sure. Um, all right, I'm going to take the Saints plus one at the Patriots in a game that probably no one's going to watch. Um, I, <laughs> I this this is ugly, and both teams are ugly, and both offenses, everything about this is bad. But well, which which is why this game's also on my card, but it's the under thirty nine and a half. Okay, <laughs> it's going to um, be ugly. Yeah, you know, you kind of alluded to. Um, quarterbacks and in, in, in franchises having to make decisions and the Patriots right now, like I, the only thing that scares me, right? Mac Jones was abysmal and he is abysmal. It's bad. And, and I do think, I do think in the future is Bailey Zappi. I, I, the little bit that he did play last year, the offense opened up, the playbook opened up. It felt like, I don't know. It felt like the players did like it, but isn't this weird with him and O'Brien? Because, you know, you basically had almost a quarterback controversy last year. The Patriots yeah. waived him on final cuts and brought him back, and he cleared waivers. Right. Yeah. It's like, a, it isn't is that a, weird? Like they're yeah. they're willing to just let him go. Right. Yeah. It is. It is weird. Um. So I think both teams are off bad games last week, right? the The Saints the Saints look bad, but I will say this: like I don't Derek Carr. I'm going to give Derek Carr a hair of a pass because I don't think he was quite right after the Green Bay game the week before getting Pass-ball knocked out of it. it. To play well, like is compared, no, to he's but trash. He is bad. Oh, he's horrible. But I, but I like the Saints' defense better than the Patriots. Patriots' D, and here's and especially this week because Judon's out, and yeah. Gonzalez, the stud rookie corner who's been lighting it up, he's out for the year, and they just lost two two major major pieces at at two of the levels of the well, and they just they just traded back for jc jackson who got benched with that huge contract right nearly over a year into it so yeah. he's coming back but there's something off there right yeah I mean, can you plug and play him yeah probably a little bit but i mean there's a reason he's not i mean you give a guy that kind of contract isn't that weird about the afc west though him randy gregory and chandler jones a year ago got huge contracts and they are all no longer with the team all cut no. all cut yep well, I'd, actually, I think they could make, maybe JC might have got a low trade there. I haven't heard all those details yet. He might have been. Yeah. Trying. He was, I think, actually. He was, actually. Yeah, he was. Um, but anyway, yeah, Saint, Saints plus one here. And well, I'll be cheering for you there. I just, again, there's like a, how many games in a row with the Saints? I got I got that under home last week, I believe. Yeah, I did. I, I had the under at 40 and a half last week with them, the Bucks. The Saints don't give up points either. Um, no. Saints defense. I, I, I actually, I can really get behind you the Saints play here. Let's just keep it low scoring. Sure. Okay. Uh, what else you got? Um, I'm going to go the Vikings plus four, um, against the chiefs. We are um, 100% agreement here. All right. And I got it early this week at five too. Ooh, nice grab. Yeah. This will be making our card. Um, 
I believe it is four in the circuit too. It is. It's four. Uh, so, you know, this, it, how much lines have changed in the NFL? Like this is a classic example. Three years ago, this line's minus seven all day. And there's just too many sharp people out there now. But like, who really wants Minnesota, right? No, I mean, not many people, but I tell you what, the Chiefs aren't that impressive. This is a spot to where I think the Vikings are live, man. Oh, I agree. I think I think they win this game. And you win this game, and all of a sudden those attitudes start changing the locker room too. You come and beat the Chiefs, now you're back to two and three, right? Yeah, yeah. In that division? And Cousins is probably playing his best football right now is the weird yeah, part. They're not winning. Yeah, he's playing. I mean – yeah, he is, but he's playing fine. I I think in and the Chiefs are gonna be battle tested here. Like, you know, the first week they were battle tested against the Lions, and the Lions had no problem moving the ball. I mean, you think Minnesota with Jefferson on the house? I just think they're gonna move the ball on them as well. So I think it's gonna be really high scoring, and I do think Minnesota can outscore them. Okay. There's actually question marks with the Chiefs offense right now, more than their defense yes. is wild. Yes, yeah, they don't look right. No, they just they there's some Look, New Coast, 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 team, they got to get a playmaker on the outside, and I hope they don't as a Broncos fan because there's sure. nothing more I want than the Chiefs not to be successful. Sure. But they just look – something's off, whatever sure. it is. Yep, yep, something's off. 100% so, yeah, right. that'll, that'll make the card for us. I love it. My hey. plus four. Perfect, perfect. Um, so I just have one play left then, so I'll let you go again since we keep green. All right. Um, I am going to take Sunday night, Rocktober. I'm, I'm taking the Niners. Um, I I just think this is cheap. It, what is third, three and a half? Yeah, I he is maybe one of the most interesting. I mean, you and I could talk for days on this, but sure. he doesn't get enough credit or respect um, for what he's doing. People act like you could just sub in any Joe Blow. Believe it or not, I had some. I had somebody today that. Honest to God, said that if Fields were on the Niners, that he could do just as – I was like, do you even watch football? Do you know that it's played on – that's what I asked him. I said, do you know the NFL's played on Sunday? Like, what, who are you watching? There's no way. I mean, it's it's just ludicrous here. And I think with Dallas blowing out the Patriots like we talked about last week, it's kind of the perfect storm here. I think everyone's going to kind of gravitate towards the Cowboys because it's three in the hook and it's this – "Quote unquote," kind of little rivalry because the Niners have eliminated from the playoffs. Niners are good, man. Brock's good. Yeah, I mean, if I if you made me bet this game, I would go with you tonight for all the reasons you said. There's just something stinky a little bit on this on a primetime deal too, and sure. Dallas is a weird team because there are. I mean, they got beat by the Cardinals though, so there's yeah, and Cardinals ran it down their throat. Ran it. Ran You're going to – and look, if, if the Cardinals are going to run it down your throat, the Niners can run the damn football, man. Yes. So, but to, to your pretty point, it's going to take him having to have – and it's got to be in the playoffs. It won't matter in the regular season. Getting the ball, you know, kind of like Brady had to do against the Rams in the Super Bowl. Getting the ball tied or needing points on the last try of the game. And he has to be the reason to right. get it down the field to do it sure. before he's going to get any respect. But he sure. doesn't give a shit. No. He's winning football games. Yep, they're winning football game. All right, I have one play left, and again, this is against everything I said, but there's another spot play here. The Panthers play hard, and they keep getting these huge lines. You were probably on the right side of that last week, but missed. Um, yep. There's some fluky stuff happened for you to miss that game. Yeah. Uh, they're getting 10 at Detroit. I like Detroit. I don't like the Panthers. I think this is too many points. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, you won't catch me wanting to lay it with Detroit. I, I agree. I mean, it's – uh, this not make it didn't make my card per se, but like I I totally understand the reasoning here. 10, 10 is just too many. Bryce, it's too many no. points for how the Panthers play because they move it a little bit and they're they're all right defensively. Yeah, I mean, yeah they're all right. You, you have one of the best pass rushers in the league. So right. Yep. I, yep. I, I just think that there's a look, am I gonna need a weird bounce, scoop and score, punt ran back, something weird? Probably. Maybe. Maybe. Probably. Yeah. But I can last second, run it down, score a touchdown to cover when they're down 15. Maybe. Sure. I mean, this, this could easily be like 30 to 16, and they're down 14 with the two minute offense out there, and they just go score. Yeah. I mean, the, the Panthers did it on that Monday night game against the Saints. They had no chance of even winning that game, sniffing winning that game, and they go down and cover. 
depending on the it finished at three, but I, most people probably got three and a half. So, yeah. um, no, I get it. I get the reasoning here. I got, I got one more. Okay. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to be a homer. I, I faded him last week, uh, my own team and the Raiders, but I'm taking him here this week. Green Bay does not deserve to be favored on the road over <laughs> anybody. Well, and they're, and they're not. So yeah. this, this line just flipped a little bit too. So if you got, oh, it, yeah, it did. but what did we get? I forgot. Cir- Circa's got Raiders as dogs. Yeah, and they're okay. actually a point favorite now. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. See, I and I agree with this. I just don't. I'm. I'm guessing there. Maybe between we started, maybe Jimmy G News came out that he's playing. Could be. That could be. But yeah. I, we get. I mean, I still see him at a pick. I'm here too. So it's a. Okay. This is a pick. I'm play right now. All right, that's cool. I I just think, like I said, I had no problem fading the Raiders last week, and boy, like they had some bad turnovers, and they were still we still had to sweat that at the end. I Green Bay doesn't do it for me. I'm I don't know. Love is kind of you. you I think you know what you have with him. Um, uh, I don't know yet. Yeah. The only, reason, it, the only reason I'm going to wait and see a little bit is that offensive line was brutal for him last week. They, like, uh, it was. Couldn't play any worse. No. Um, I don't know. I This is the game, too. I just think the Paraders probably respond. No one wants anything to do with them either. I mean, I spot. don't. I, yeah. I just – the Raiders have got a lot going on. They had that last week, too. Maybe that's behind them. I completely get your play here. Yeah. I just got to – yeah, I got the rate. So get the Raiders and I pick them. Okay. Okay. It's my I, I I can see that. It's a. I mean, look, Jordan gave us a whole breakdown last week, and it didn't look great on prime time. No. But they're a young, weird team too, so they'll be week to week stuff. I, I I understand the spot play here with the Raiders, but I don't think they're a good football team either. No, I don't either. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> uh, again, we've been we've been on the right side of the NFL stuff. We call this the. The main course where we butter our bread. I got five plays. I got you for six. Um, So I'll go ahead and run those down quick. I got the Falcons minus 1.5. The Bengals minus three. uh, The Saints and Patriots under 39.5. Vikings plus four. And the Panthers plus 10. I got Smool for six plays here with the Steelers plus four. Saints plus one. Vikings plus four. Atlanta minus 1.5. 49ers minus three in the hook. And the Raiders in a pick 'em. Um, right. There's yeah. one more game I might just add real quick. I, I'm like, no, oh, I want to play the Rams, man. So the Rams are on a different thing. I had to pick five and two, and they were on my card and had to scratch them out. But this weirdness of Stafford's uh, health right now has me hold I, because I, I, just, okay. I was listening to NFL radio on the way here, and I don't think he's practicing very much. So, yeah, his, the reason it's not making my card is his health. There's a really good chance this game will be on our circuit plays. And if you like it too, yeah, I do like the Rams gosh, but it, it does depend so much on if he's, if he's, if he's not be, playing, I'm not touching the game. No. And if, but if he's going to be a statue, because he, I mean, he was damn near a statue against the Colts. He was, <laughs> but hey, you, you can't be that against this Eagles D line. No, and that, and that's what scares me a little bit. But I saw yeah. Cup practice this week too. Okay, all right. So, yeah, the Eagles are another team, man. They don't pass the. They don't look balls. right right now. They just don't no. look right. It's it's weird, and this will be the last year of the brotherly shove, tush push, whatever they're calling it. You have to switch it because you can't go a hundred percent on no right goal. You know, it's 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 easy to it's an easy fix too. So right, right. So are they making your card? Uh, no, I'll keep it off. I'll just keep it off. It There's a really fun. good chance this will make our circuit play, though. Yeah, yeah. A really good chance. So we'll we'll both, we'll both lean hard that way. If, if Stafford makes this game, I love him at plus four, four and a half, wherever you're getting at right now. I, I love it, actually. I think they're yeah. potentially live. There's some right. other Eagles having to go do a last-minute touchdown win down four. Yeah. Now. I mean, it's just one of those. We'll have to get more news here maybe tonight and tom- into tomorrow. and just. I, th- I think by tomorrow afternoon, we'll know where Stafford's at by that point. If he goes, sure. if he goes full participant tomorrow, I'll be playing the Rams. All right. Yeah, that sounds good. Cool. All right. Well, that's all I got for this point, too. Got anything else to add, buddy? Nope. All set, man. All right. Again, thank you to our sponsors at Revelton. Uh, thanks to Three Beards Media for having us. Uh, thanks to Chris Spaghetti, our producer behind the scenes rear. Um, as always, 
I'm Ted. He's small. Cash that ticket.